Hi there, and welcome back to this channel. In this video, I'm going to take you through the Clairaut's theorem. So, Clairaut's theorem, the term says, suppose that if F is defined on a dex D that contains a point AB, if the functions fxy and fyx are continuous on this dex, then fxy of ab should be equal to fxy ab. If this is the first time you've been on this channel, this channel is Calculus Family and you've done a lot of useful tutorials which you need to get access to so you understand the calculus with several variables. So, taking you through the Clorus theorem, the Clorus theorem is limited to two variables fxy and fyx but we can extend it and also apply it to three and higher variables okay so it says that if f is defined on a dex the reason why we are dealing with a dex now is because we are in the um 3d okay a function of two variables okay so we are expecting shapes like a sphere and you get it sorry you are getting shapes like a cylinder and the rest okay okay not really cylinder but when you talk about dex this is a two which is a higher plane okay it's not only one function it's taking in two variables okay so this is in a polar form you are indeed going to get a dex so if i have a plane and i have Two functions define x, y using the polar form. I know r, I know theta from this side. When I take any revolution, I'm getting a dex around my plane. Okay, I'm getting a dex around my plane. So now let's see something here. The point of interest here is not a dex. Please take notes. The point of interest is not a dex. I want you to focus on this side of the theorem. I want you to focus on this side of the theorem, which says if the function fxy and fyx are continuous on this dex, then fxy of ab should be equal to fyx of ab. What is this trying to say? It means that if you find your partial derivatives and they are both continuous, then your higher derivatives are the same, they become the same. Okay, so we found f of x. I have a function f of x, y, and you have found the first derivative with respect to x, first derivative with respect to y, and these two functions are continuous over a certain point a, b. Then these two variables will surely have the same higher derivatives. So, meaning f, x, y, and f, y, x should be equal, and that is all this term is saying. So let's take a problem here so you understand this term. So, so verify. Verify the Clairaut's theorem. For f of x y is equal to x e to the power negative x squared y squared. Please, I've given this question, but when we say continuity, let me show you a brief overview of continuity. The reason we're saying if these two functions f x and f y, if they are continuous over the main function f of x y and at the point a and b whenever you are talking about continuity it means that you have the function being defined at all points okay so within the point a b each f s and f y wouldn't have any breakages or any discontinuity anywhere if that happens then it means that chloride's term can be satisfied so if you want to test if your fx and your fy are continuous you just put a 
and be inside. If you're not getting anything undefined, it means that you can move ahead to find your or to verify your chloride term. Okay, so let's see. The function given f x y is equal to x e to the power negative x squared y squared. Right? Yes. So this function here, we have to find the f x and the f y. Then after we find the higher derivatives. So let's find the f y. F y is equal to when I come here, the y happens to be the power. Okay. So any x becomes a constant. So I'll just this being an exponential part. We will just differentiate the exponent, then multiply by the whole expression. So I'll have x, right? Then, which is the constant out here? Multiplying the derivative form of this exponent. When I differentiate the exponent, I'm getting what? When I differentiate 2y, y squared, I'm getting 2y. So I'm getting 2y multiplying this negative x squared here, which is also a constant. Or multiplying e to the power negative x squared, y squared. And this is derivative with respect to y. So expanding this, I'm getting negative s cube y. So the two is here. So negative two s cube y e to the power negative s squared y squared. So once I have this, I find my fx. My fx, you know that x is here, x is here. This becomes sort of chain rule. Okay, we will have x. Which is um, x here, which is a linear function, this is exponential function. I'll differentiate this x whilst maintaining this and likewise. Okay, so when I do that, differentiating this with respect to x, I'm getting 1, and maintaining this, I'm getting e to the power negative x squared y squared plus maintaining x and differentiating the x here. When I differentiate the x here, I'll get negative 2x y squared. Okay negative 2x y squared right multiplying e to the power negative x squared y squared so at this point my fx is equal to e to the power negative x squared y squared minus 2x squared y squared e to the power negative x squared y squared i've got my two partial derivatives right so Getting these two partial derivatives. Let's see. To prove Chloris term, Chloris term is saying is that if these two functions, fx and the fy, are continuous, then we can go ahead, okay, and find fyx and fxy. Then we compare if they are the same. Then it's, it means that the term is true. But first of all, let's see. This is my f. Y is it continuous? Is there any value of x or y that will make this function undefined? No, we don't have right exponential function will take all inputs and here is a linear function. Likewise, this one there wouldn't be any value of x or y that will make it undefined. So it's still continuous over x and y ranges. That is over row numbers. Okay, so let me see to find f y x. We are tackling this. So I'm going to differentiate this with respect to what x. So with respect to x, I'm going to have this side will give me what negative six x squared, but this becomes um, partial derivatives. Okay, so I say partial. Um, it becomes the chain rule because we have a linear function negative two x cube y multiplying the exponential function. So for that reason, my f y x becomes negative six x squared y whilst maintaining my exponential part e to the power negative x squared y squared plus now i'm going to maintain this part negative 2 s cube y then i'll differentiate my exponential part with respect to what? x and that will give me what negative 2 x y squared that is you always differentiate your power then you multiply by the whole expression that's all e to the power negative x squared y squared like this so here this gives me negative 6x squared y e to the power negative x squared y squared this side will simplify to be what plus 4x to the power 4y cube e to the power negative x squared 
y squared. Then now let's come to the fxy. fxy. So for the fxy, I'm going to have this function to differentiate, okay? So meaning I'm going to differentiate this with respect to y. So taking the first expression, it's an exponential expression. When I differentiate this expression with respect to y, I'll simply get, we'll differentiate here with respect to y, that is 2y multiplying negative x squared e to the power negative x squared y squared, right? Then I'll come to this side too and I'll differentiate this with respect to y. Differentiating this with respect to y, I'm going to get another composite function, a linear function here, an exponential function here. So I'll differentiate this, maintaining this, and after I'll differentiate this, maintaining this. So here, differentiating this, I'm going to get minus 4. I'm differentiating with respect to y, okay? So minus 4. Let me make it minus 2x squared. Then the y becomes 2y, right? Maintaining e to the power negative x squared, y squared. I'm not done with this. Plus, when I maintain the negative 2x squared, y squared, then I differentiate the power, the exponential part here with respect to y. I'm going to get here, when I differentiate here with respect to y, I'm going to get 2y multiplying negative x squared all times so e to the power negative x squared y squared i simplify this is giving me this part is giving me negative 2 x squared y e to the power negative x squared y squared this is negative 4 x squared y that is this 4 x squared y e to the power negative x squared y squared then here i omitted the negative 2 so 2 is here okay then i have so i'm done with this side that is here then i come to this side so when i expand that part i'm getting hot x squared here this place i'm going to get negative 2 times 2 is 4 so negative 4 but i have negative here so to be positive 4 positive 4 then the x i have x squared i have x here i'll get x to the power 4 i have y i have y y cube i have e to the power negative x squared y squared so now i still simplify you realize that this negative 2x squared y is the same as these expressions are the same. I'll join them. Negative 6x squared y e to the power negative x squared y squared plus 4x to the power 4 y to the power 3 e to the power negative x squared y squared. I can say that this expression here and this are the same. And I showed you that they are continuous. Therefore, the Clarice terms. The Clarice term is verified. It's verified. Since our fyx and our fxy are the same. Thank you for being with me in this video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.